Hi, today I'm going to start to talk about the zero force member. Whenever we have a trust and we start to analyze that trust, at some point when we are doing the analysis, we will find that some of the members uh, has no force engine or in otherwise when we calculate the force, the internal force in those members, the internal force comes out as zero. Uh, when we have the, why we have those zero force members in the trust there are basically two main reasons for that one of them for the stability of the trust so we can build a trust so make sure the trust is going to stay there and the second is that uh, when we analyze the trust we analyze trust under very specific load so and under that specific load those members the internal force in those members comes at zero if we change the forces if and it might happen then those members might not be zero force anymore so so one of the reason is that uh, why we have those members there first of all as a for the stability and the second um, reason is that when the loading is changing when the loading changing there might not be zero member anymore if we can detect those zero member early on to analysis, it saves us some time because instead of we do the calculation and write all the equation and then we find out there are zero, it would be much easier that initially we look at those those uh, elements and say, okay, there is no force in those uh, elements and we can ignore them and don't do any calculation for them. It saves us some time, saves us some calculation. There are two method to, to define uh, a zero, zero force member just by looking at them, just by inspection without doing any analysis. The first one is the force is for the joint that has two members. In general, if we have the joint that only has two members and there is no external forces on that joint and there is no support on that joint, those two members are zero member forces there are zero forces member so there's no forces in those members so one more time if you have a joint that there are only two members connected to that joint and there is no external forces or reaction at that joint then those two members that connected to the joint are zero force member so what are the examples for the zero force member? For example, assume I have a truss uh, look like uh, this. So let's have a truss. Assume I have a truss that look like this. I have a support here. I have a support here. And then I have a force applying on this point. So if I call this, so say A, B, C, D, E, and F. If I have the uh, joint like that. If you look at these uh, ones, again, this is the criteria. I, I'm going to look for the joints that has two connections. There are only two uh, members connected to that joint. And there is no force or reaction in those uh, joints. So here, if I look at that, and then I will I will immediately can pick up on the joint A. So joint A, it has two members, and there is no um, forces or uh, support at point at joint A. Therefore, I can immediately without doing any analysis, I will go ahead and say, okay, this is zero, this is zero force member, and this is the zero force member. You don't need to do any analysis. And you may ask, why is that? If you want to know that, do the joint metal for joint A. So I, I do the joint A. So this is a joint A. And then I would draw all the external forces, all the forces apply on that joint. So there's no external forces. There is uh, FAB, and there would be, sorry, there's FAB, and there would be F. A F here. So I look at that. If I write a sigma f f x is zero. If I write a sigma f x is zero, it gives me f 
a b is zero and if i write the sigma f y is zero and assume this is the theta then i'm i'm gonna have f a f sine theta is zero therefore f a f is zero so any other condition we have like that that we have only two forces there they're not the third one there's only two forces at the joint the only way that it can be the equilibrium is that those two forces become zero so that's why you have here if you have a joint with only two members there's no forces here no support here so these are um, zero elements the same as here the same here if i look at the joint d again there is a joint there's two members connected to that there is no external forces at d there's no support at d therefore this one is going to be also zero this one is going to also be zero so if i look at that so by without doing anything if you look at uh, this um, uh, combination then I, I would say that instead of analyzing this whole um, uh, trust I can start to analyze a simple form of that and how, how to do that is that if I go ahead and say okay instead of doing that I know these two are zero these two are zero so instead of analyzing that I would start with this right away so I would go ahead and say this is the F and this is the point B and this is the joint C out instead of analyzing that truss I would analyze this truss I, for, I do not need to do any analysis for the uh, members that are, are zero remember that if for example the, if I have it instead of that if instead of that shape I have it like this and then i have it here so if i have it like a b c d e and f in that case if assume i have it like that um, also i have this in that case again the joint a only uh, has two members there are no external forces no support there. they're both going to be zero but here at joint if you look at the joint d there are two members connected at joint d but there is a support there so these two are not zero so we cannot eliminate it although there's only two members connected to joint d but because there is a uh, support there there is going to be a reaction or external forces there then there cannot be uh, zero uh, it cannot be uh, consider that only these two would be zero these two would have the um, force in the uh, in the similar way also if you um, to do that now so this for this one if I go back and um, uh, look at this one uh, again now I have the joint B and joint E both of them has two members connected to them these are them are both uh, two members connected to them so here there are two members connected to the joint but there is a reaction there there is a support there so i cannot say these two are zero but here at joint e there are two members connected to joint e there is no external forces at joint e therefore also these two are gonna be zero so also these two would become zero and these would become zero then this would become equivalent to just single triangle like that so it's going to be b c and it's going to be force f on top of that now i cannot simplify it further although i have two points at each joint i have two members at each joint but here i have a support here i have a support here i have external forces so i cannot eliminate any of those uh, forces eventually this is what i i would so instead of analyzing this truss i only need to analyze this simple uh, triangle 
uh, for that purpose of my analysis. Uh, for this one, it would not be sim uh, similar like that, so it would become equivalent to this. So it's a point B, and this is a point F, and the point D, and the point C, and point E. I cannot simplify that one further because at point B, I have two joints, and there is a reaction there. I have two members, but there is a reaction there. Here also I have two members, but there is a reaction there. So I cannot either remove these or these. Here I have three members, so I cannot do anything. Here I have three. Also I have the external forces applied there, here. So I cannot do anything there. So I cannot do almost anything in energy. That's the, sim the simplest I can get it. So this one would become simplified to this. That one would be become simplified to this one. So this is, um, this is the first method of doing that. So one more time, how to do that. Just go ahead and search for the joints that has two members, only two members. If there is no external forces on that joint, then those joints would be uh, zero. Those uh, members connected to those joints would be zero. So that's the first method of, of how we are doing that. The second method is that we will go ahead and look for the members that has three joints, uh, for the joints that has three members. So. If you have a joint that has three members and two of those three members are aligned and there is no external force or reaction on that joint, then the third one would be zero. Uh, how it would be, so let me show you a very quick example. So, Marta, this is a point. So, if I have a joint that there are three members connected to that, if two of those three members are aligned and there is no forces, no external forces, no reaction on that joint, then the third one would be zero. So, this one would be zero. So if I have a three joint, three members connected to the joint, there is no external forces on that joint, there is no reaction on that joint, and two of those members are aligned, the third one would be zero. It doesn't matter which direction they are, even if they are, if I have a joint like that, and I have three members connected to that, two of them are aligned, the third one is not aligned, and then you have, there is no forces here, there is no reaction here, also, this third one would become zero. So, and it doesn't matter what angle it has. So, again, one more example. You have two members. I have a joint with three members. And two of those three members are aligned. If I have a joint with three members, I have a joint with three members, that two of the joints are aligned, and there is no forces or no reaction on that joint, then the third one would be zero. So this one is also becomes zero. So in either of these cases, that would be uh, zero. So let's look at an example, see how we can uh, uh, look at that. So So assume we have a um, truss look like this. And there's a force here. And uh, there's two members here, two members also here. So if I look at it, it's a, a, B, C, D, E, 
f and g and h and let me draw that force with another color so I'm gonna get confused so have a force applying on that joint D so if I look at here I will start um, <coughs> if I look at the joint E the joint E there are three members connected to that two of them are aligned there is no forces on that joint there's no reaction on that joint therefore this one would become zero the same for joint F if I look at that these two are aligned so there are three members there two of them are aligned there's no forces applied on that joint therefore this would become the third one becomes zero so if I come and redraw that uh, I have something like that so it goes up <coughs> so goes up here and here here and here and I have the reaction here have the reaction here and the force So if I redraw that, I look at that, so this is the, I don't redraw the zero forces, I only draw the forces that, member that has forces. So it's going to be A, B, C, D, and we have G here, and we have H here. And now if, <clears throat> now if you look at this one, this new one, I look at the joint B, I joint with these two, there are three members connected to joint B and two of them are aligned therefore the third one becomes zero so there are three members connected to joint B two of them are aligned there is no external forces there therefore this one will become zero as well so also we can take that out from the um, our truss so again I will redraw that again so it's going to be again simplified to this so that would be simplified again I have it it would be simplified to something like that so it's going to be A C D H and G and then we have the forces also applying that So it would be simplified to this one, so it's going to be A. So now if I inspect the, uh, the joint again, at joint A, I have external forces, I have support, so don't worry about that. At joint C, I have four connections, so there's nothing I can do. At joint D, there's external forces, there's a supporter, so they cannot do anything. At G, there's external forces, so just ignore it, can't do anything. At H, there are three members, there are three members, there are no external forces, but these are not aligned, so it, at least two of them should be aligned. So also I cannot do anything there, I cannot simplify it further. So this is how uh, it will work out, so one more time, what we want to look at that is that we will go ahead, first look for the a joint that has three members and if two of the members are aligned and the third and there is no external forces there is no um, uh, uh, what is a reaction or support there then the third one regardless of what angle it has it would be zero so the third one would be zero so you can look at uh, another example um, uh, for this one as well So if you have the trust look like this. And I have this member going there. 
another blank here. Just another blank there. Just another blank here. Yeah. So if I go A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then I have the external forces F here, external forces apply on that. I want to see how it works out. Again, I will start to look at uh, the joints. So joint A, there is a reaction there. There is a we can't do anything about that. Joint D, there is a reaction there. We can't do anything about that. Joint G, there is an external force there. We can't do anything about that. So right away, we ignore all the joints that there is an external force because one of the condition was always there should be no external force. So A or support. So A, D, and G is out of question. We cannot do anything about that. Now we are look at the C, uh, joint C. So there are only three members there. Two of them are aligned. So the ter and there's no external forces or reaction. So the third one is going to become zero. So this is going to be zero. As soon as I remove that, as soon as this one becomes zero, then at joint B, I have only three members. Because this one is not there anymore. It's zero. It doesn't do anything. Because its internal force is zero, we can just remove it. It doesn't do anything. So as soon as it becomes zero and I remove it from that, then I have three elements connected at, at joint E, two of them are aligned, there is no external forces, therefore the third one becomes zero. Now that this one is zero, I will come to joint B. Again, at joint B, remove that BE, because it is zero, assume it is not there, assume the B is not there anymore. What is remain is that there is this one, this one, and this one. So these three members left there, again, two of them are aligned, there is no external reaction or forces, therefore the third one becomes zero. And then right away go to the F. Again, remove BF. I assume the, the member BF is not there because it's a zero member. Just remove it. If I remove it, the remaining members is going to be one, two, three. So there are three members going to remain. Two of them are aligned. No external forces there. One, the third one becomes zero. So eventually, if I look at that, this one would become equivalent to uh, something like that. So it's going to become A, D, and then G, and external force F. So all the other members are zero members. I can just simply remove them from the truss. I only going to analyze this. So one more time, uh, this is how we are going to do that. Uh, uh, we are go when we have the truss, first we start to uh, inspect to see if we can find any zero members. So the first type of zero members are the ones that connected. There are the ones that two members connected to the joint. So first, if you have a joint that there are two members, there's if we have a joint that it has only two members, and there is no external forces or reaction on that joint, those two members are zero member, zero force member. The second type is that if we have a joint with only three members, two of them are aligned, and there is no force or reaction on the tear on the joint, then the third third member is the zero force member. Remember that. Every time right here, every time that we find a zero force member, just remove it from the truss and then start inspecting for the uh, two or three members. So every zero force member you find it, assume it is not there, just remove it and then look the remaining of the truss um, for the zero force member. That's one thing you need to do. If you have the reaction or force on that joint, there's nothing you can do about that joint. So. And, and also, we only look for the two or three uh, uh, joint, two or three members. So the joint with the two or the joint with the three members. Um, if we keep removing the members, again, we go back and reanalyze the whole thing. Every time that you remove the zero force, go back and start to re uh, uh, to inspect again for the two or three members. Because sometimes, like here, when we remove the zero member force, 
then we may uh, create a condition for more zero, uh, zero force member. Uh, so remember uh, to always uh, do that. Well, uh, one other thing is that these are some tricks that helps us to save some time at computation. If we cannot find this zero member, this is not a big deal. When we do the analysis, they will come out uh, as zero. So it's not that if we miss them in this inspection, then our analysis is going to be wrong. No, we just, if we miss them, we need to do some more steps and eventually we find out by calculation that they are zero. This is only a, like a trick that helps us to save some time and it's not going to make our analysis right or wrong. So if we miss them, there's no big deal. You just, if you couldn't find a zero force member, just do the analysis the way as you do um, uh, with those members there and eventually you will calculate them uh, as zero and you will find that there would be zero. Otherwise, this only helps us to save some time.